So um, just before we start, um, I just want to give uh, prayers to everybody impacted by um, Hurricane Ida and the wildfires and everything going on in the world. Barbara and I had scheduled this back in June, never knowing what would happen um, last week with the flooding in New Jersey. And um, we were working back and forth and then I heard silence and I figured she was out scrambling with the, with the farm. And so being who I am, I said, <laughs> you want me to do the service and um, just take a rest. And this goes along with the theme of our service today is um, we don't know the details until we get to the present moment, so. Let us begin. Let us start with opening prayer. Let us rejoice today in the manifold richness of life about us and within. Within us is understanding, choice, and service. About us as a fair and bountiful nature and the works of generous men and women. Let us magnify the spirit of this institute in strength to minister an ever more abundant life and peace to all the world, amen. The spirit of God is wonderful to us, revealing itself in all ways of creation, in the ordered course of the stars and in the unpredictable ways of living things, in the heat of the blazing sun and in the warmth of the human heart. The divine will is revealed in the majesty of the human spirit, for its home is not only in the heavens, but also in the heart of all humanity. Amen. So good morning, everyone. The Institute for Spiritual Development is a God-centered metaphysical church and community dedicated to the growing spiritual awareness in the atmosphere of unconditional love and acceptance. We welcome everybody. And today we're honored and pleasured to have ISD Madison woo -woo, and ISD TC join together for the first time in a shared uh, service. So it, we're really grateful for this. Let us join in and saying the prayer of St. Francis and I will Put that up on the screen for everybody. That's it. Okay. And if you will join me with the prayer of St. Francis. Lord, Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Where there is offense, let me bring pardon. Where there is discord, let me bring union. Where there is error, let me bring the truth. Where there is doubt, let me bring faith. Where there is despair, let me bring hope. Where there is darkness, let me bring your light. Where there is sadness, let me bring joy. O Master, let me not seek as much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that one receives, it is in self-forgetting that one finds, it is in pardoning that one is pardoned, and it is in dying that one is raised to eternal life. Amen. And if we can go ahead and state all the ISD principles. We believe in infinite intelligence. We believe that infinite intelligence expresses itself in all existence and in humanity 
as a divine manifestation of divine love. We affirm the unity of all life everywhere. We believe in communion with all planes of existence and that meaningful communication flows from this connection. We affirm the divine right of each individual to seek the truth in accordance with their consciousness and that living in harmony with that truth defines true spirituality. We affirm that spiritual unfoldment is progressive and unending, and that the doorway to reform reformation is never closed against any soul. We believe that the highest morality is contained in the mandate, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. We affirm the personal responsibility of the individual and that we choose our happiness or unhappiness as we apply the laws of the universe. We affirm that life is eternal and that the existence and personal identity of the individual continue after the change called death. We believe the ultimate expression of God in our life is unconditional love of our neighbors and ourselves. And we accept that the living gifts of prophecy and healing reported in all sacred scriptures are an affirmation of divine spirit working through us. And now um, let's get re ready for the wellness section. And this is wellness and meditation. And so in preparation for healing, we ask that everybody remain quietly seated. And ISD members who are healers will participate. And they've all had training in ethics of energy medicine. And we will begin with a healing prayer. O oh thou, the light of all souls, the life of all beings, the healer of our hearts, all sufficient and all powerful God, the forgivers of our shortcomings, free us from all pain and suffering and make us thy instruments, that we may in turn free others from pain and suffering and that we may impart to them thy light, thy life, thy joy, and thy peace. We let it be so, and so it is. Amen. If there's anyone that's open to healing, say their name silently to yourself. We ask special healing for those people open to healing and whose names are spoken. And to those who serve in military and civilian service, and on whose shoulders rest the decisions that affect all nations. And I want everybody to take a nice deep breath and hold it for a few seconds and then release slowly. And then go ahead and take a nice Deep breath again, hold and release. For today's meditation, we are going to focus on suggestions from Reverend Kathy Kirsten about the September new moon. This new moon is tomorrow night at 8.51 p.m. And this is a very rare event. And so what I'd like us to do is take one more nice deep breath and let it out slowly. And we're releasing all that does not serve us. 
and our feet and our ankles were releasing all congestion, all aches and pains. And they're being repaired in our legs and our knees and our hips. We're releasing all the aches and tiredness of the muscles and we're rejuvenating them right now, right here, right now. And we let our breath become calm. And we feel the love and the burning inside our chest. And we release everything that no longer serves us. We free ourselves from thoughts, beliefs, and attitudes that no longer serve us. We focus on our attention intention to what is important. An intention to what we think, what we say, and how we feel emotionally and mentally. We focus on releasing ancestral ties ties that go back through the family tree that are negative and no longer serve us. We release yesterdays. We release yesterday and we begin right here and right now. And we take action by taking our power back and we take it back for faith, for abundance. We take action with courage and increased energy and joy. We envision and create for ourselves a new future. We welcome faith, abundance and love into our lives. And so take one more nice breath and let out slowly and let, let us release. And at the same time we're releasing, we're allowing the love and abundance to flow into our lives. We allow that transformation to happen right here, right now. We focus on rapid positive change and freedom. We focus on good health and excitement for a new today and a new tomorrow. We leave our comfort zones and we widen our social circles and communities. We embrace the openness of life. We meet a diversity of people from different cultures or geographical areas, ethnic backgrounds than our own. And we embrace the complex, beautiful mosaic of life found in others. We embrace interactions with others and new friendships. We expand our community. We take action to enhance our intuition and our self-discovery, our self-awareness. And we welcome creative breakthroughs and increased adapt adaption to all circumstances. 
We are like water over rocks. We are flexible. We are clean. We are fresh. We are the healing waters. Amen. And so I invite everybody to come back. And if you can take a deep breath and let it out quickly. <sighs> Wiggle your toes, your ears if you can. Open your eyes, is everybody back there? As this healing service ends, please listen, absorb, and send these words out into the world with all the power and energy which has been generated this morning. I am the commanding conscious presence that demands peace and harmony in every area and aspect of my life, in my work, in my play, with my friends and family, and within my inner being, the peace and harmony of God are active, present, and in full operation and complete manifestation. I send this peace out to every leader in every country and all who make decisions that bring change in our world. I know that peace and harmony of God are active in every person everywhere. And I see this country surrounded by light as more people choose to meditate on peace. I surrender to spirit the ways in which this will happen. I lay aside my limited opinions as they place my trust in the infinite wisdom of God knowing that peace and harmony awakens in the hearts, minds, imaginations, hopes and dreams and wishes for everyone. Wherever there is God, peace and harmony are active, present and in full manifestation. And so it is. Thank you, healers. I'd like to um, turn to the congregational prayer. Do we have everybody back from it looks like it, yes. And if we can share together in the congregational prayer. Dear creator, help us to nurture the best spiritual practices so that we are better able to receive your wisdom and direction. May we come to you with gratitude and praise and thanksgiving with disciplined awareness of your loving presence and guidance. Support us in our steadfast faith, walking every moment and every step with your essence encompassing us. May the unnecessary distractions of life fade away as we keep focus on the priorities of you, our beloved, and on our lives, our families, and our community in service to you and humanity. We give thanks, we let it be so, and so it is, amen. And so I will be giving the, the reading and homily, if I can find it. Okay, our reading today is Psalm 139, 1 through 12. You have searched me, Lord, and you know me. You know when I sit and when I rise. You perceive my thoughts from afar. 
You discern my going out and my lying down. You are familiar with all my ways. Before a word is on my tongue, you, Lord, know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, too lofty for me to attain. Where can I go from you, spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will hide me and the light become night around me, even the darkness will not be dark to you. The night will shine like the day for the darkness is as light to you. So good morning, everybody. Good morning, ISD Madison and ISD TC. Today's homily is, uh, let's, let's listen. God has all the details or God holds all the details. Now, I thought to myself, that sounds familiar to something else. We'll go to the something else, but we are actually on focusing on God has all the details. So there's a phrase that the devil is in the details. I got some notes, um, which means that mistakes are usually made in the smallest details of a project. Usually it's a caution to pay attention to avoid failure. And an ancient well-known phrase is, God is in the detail, which means that attention paid to small things has big rewards or that details are important. We know this, that if we transpose a couple numbers, it can mess a project up, engineering, accounting, our birthday. Um, I did uh, that on Facebook and I can't change my birthday. I was born in 1908. So I'm 116 right now. So one mistake and all of a sudden I'm 116 years old. So these, it is important, these details. John Cook writes, some say the devil is in the details, meaning solutions break down when you examine them closely. And then he goes on to say, God is in the details, meaning opportunities for discovery and creativity comes from digging into the details. Both are true, but the latter is more interesting. So today is a bit different. We are saying God has all the details and I'm finding relief from that. In fact, all this all, whole entire past week, I felt relief from that. Um, from our reading, we know that God knows us better than we know us. And I actually, some people go, I can't do anything without God knowing. And I actually feel, and this started maybe 25 years ago, relief in that. Okay, maybe I did something wrong, but okay, I did something wrong, let's move on. Um, there's no hiding. God has all the details. But it's not meant to be frightening. It's meant to be God has your back. By the word or meaning God, and I mean all source, our higher intelligence. Last week I was calling um, God the, the ma complex matrix, like the complex communicator. And so God has all details of life from an ant's cellular level to the vast cosmos. You see these beautiful photographs of the cosmos, right down to beyond what we can understand the greatest detail. So what does that mean for us today? What, what are we talking about here? 
God has is all knowing. And we as spiritual beings, and again, this goes to last week, I found myself getting off track. Do we really want to know all the details? I'm sure there's a, a few people that would say, yes, I want to know everything. Um, but personally, I don't. Maybe it comes with age, but I want to know what I need to know. And I believe that's what God gives us, the details, whether we're working on a project or whatever we're doing as we need them. It's what we call when we work, well, I've worked in government, it's a need to know. You have classified and secret, all classified information, it's need to know. If you don't need to know, you don't get it. Um, and are we able, It let's say God says, well, okay, I'll give you all the details. Are we able in our current existence on this earthly plane to handle that? I would like to read, this is one of my favorite stories. And again, it's all in the details. I was looking for it all day, my book, The Unveiling of Love. I couldn't find it anywhere. And I wrote out the homily and I said, okay, you're going to have to paraphrase this. And I said to my husband, I'm going to look one more time. And I went right to the bookshelf in the guest room and there it was because it's all in the details. Only when I was ready that it would be revealed. So let me share this um, story. And it's from... The Unveiling of Love. It's one of my absolute favorite books. Jesus, upon him be peace, one day saw a young man watering the garden and he greeted him with peace. And the young man recognized Jesus, upon him be peace, and said, O oh, messenger of God, pray for me to the Almighty that he may grant me as my portion one atom of his love. And Jesus replied, know for sure that you could not bear as much as one atom of God's love you so desire. But the young man was insistent. In that case, let him grant me half an atom of his love. And Jesus, the spirit of God, raised his hands once in supplication to the divine unity. O oh Lord, grant and bestow upon this youth just a half an atom of your love. And then he went on his way. Sometime later, Jesus, upon him be peace, passed that way again. And he could not see the young man who had begged him for just a half an atom of God's love. So he asked where he was. And they said, Oh, prophet of God, that young man went way to the mountains and wandered into the deserts. We have no news of how he is and what has become of him. And Jesus, upon him be peace, prayed to the Almighty and asked that the young man be shown to him. By divine inspiration, Jesus was told that the young man's whereabouts where they were, where he was, and went straight there. He went straight there. Seeing the youth sitting upon a st steep rock, immersed in complimentation, he called out to him. Far from responding, the young man didn't even turn his head and look. Jesus called out again, identify himself this time, but again, he got no response. It was then that God, the Lord of majesty and perfection, vows say to Jesus this inspiration. How can one with even half an atom of my love in his heart be expected to hear the voices of men? Oh, Jesus, for the sake of my might and majesty, do not suppose that he heard your voice and yet gave you no answer. If they were to cut the young man up with a saw, he would feel no pain. 
If they throw him into the fire, the fire would not burn his body. He would not even notice the heat of the flames. And so that's, that's probably one of my favorite stories of all times, that incredible love, that half an atom of the beloved. And so going back to the all knowing, the details, can you imagine half an atom of knowing everything there is to know in the universe, all the details? There we just had a story on love. So God holds all the details. Tomorrow night at 8.51, I suggest maybe taking some quiet time and releasing all the details of your past, all the details in your life that no longer serve you and make way for positive change. How many times do we waste thinking about details that really don't concern us? And so I want to ask, <clears throat> what are our priorities today in September 2021? I asked this question last week because I found myself getting distracted on things I'm really not involved with. I'll help if I can, but I'm not directly involved. What are our priorities as individuals? This year, this month, am I focused on the past, memories, or today and creating tomorrow? And what do I focus on when I'm reading the news or social media or I see a movie? It gets me all crying. Called the midwife does that. I think it's the music. Um, but do I have the expertise to address things? Yesterday, and this was a turning point, um, I had done many development projects overseas. So when Louisiana, uh, the Hurricane Ida hit, I thought, what can I do? Well, what can they do? Then the bossy me project manager crisis management. Well, we'll get community, we'll get community generators. Then I started. I started getting into the details. We have to have a level platform, this and that. And I went on for 20 minutes with the pups. We, I do this and that. And I'm like, no, no, it's not your business, Melinda. You can help by giving prayers, sending funds, things like that. But do not get into the details of supplying electric to Louisiana right now. They have people that do that. This is where I, we get off. We get off on things that are not priority in our lives. And, and really it takes away from what is a priority in our life. Last Thursday, I'm gonna uh, come to a close, but last Thursday I was driving. I was in Vero Beach and I was going to my last errand. And I was at the stoplight and I was thinking, I'm going to be honest about Afghanistan. I was working over there and we're still trying to get what they call special immigration visa or direct staff out. And I've done everything I could. Um, we're working. There's a whole network, military and civilian working on this. And I said, I, I can't do any more because I don't know what to do. I, I just don't. I'm sitting at the light having a talk with God. And I said, I'm just going to have to let this go, whatever else, because I'm at a wall. I'm seeing a wall. And I said, when and where, if you need me, just knock real hard, because I'm that kind of person that needs to be alerted. And just knock me on the side of the head and let me know. But otherwise, you know, I've got to work on some other things. Um, so I made a turn onto Airport Road. I was going to Olivia's, a wonderful Italian um, takeout to get some chicken parm. And I get there and I hear my phone beeping. And it's a colleague of mine from 10 years ago in Afghanistan. She goes, are, she texts, are you there? I, th I need your help with something. So I bought, made my purchases and called. And there are some more things I can do. But here it is. 
God was the communicator. I wasn't. It's as we need to know. It just gave me goosebumps. I had turned it over. There's nothing more I can do. And uh uh-uh, you got some more things you can do here. But it was delivered at the right time. And it's all in the details. And we do not have all the details. So at this point, let us release those memories, those thoughts and details that no longer serve us. And let's focus on, think about what are the priorities in our lives right now and what needs our full attention. And then like a project, we go step by step, like a recipe, step by step, and all will be revealed. And I want to end with a quote from Amira Ali. If you think you are a small body, you think you are a small body, yet within you is wrapped the greater world. So thank you, everybody. And we're gonna move on to the prosperity part of the um, service. The Institute for Spiritual Development appreciates your love and support. And so we ask, even though we're on Zoom, to hold your gift in your heart and uh, infuse it with your wonderful energy and with your hopes and wishes for our our houses of worship for the Institute. If you're here for a first time, take your blessing and put it back in your pocket. Your presence is your gift. Prosperity is a state of mind. Prosperity is not only financial. It includes love, health, and happiness. Prosperity, we should think of ourselves as prosperous and also as the Institute as being prosperous in peace, wisdom, service, and financial abundance. Divine love always has and divine love always will supply our every need. Bless these gifts, O creator, and bless the souls that in their giving, abundance is given back to them and the cup overflows with love and prosperity. O God, most merciful and gracious, of whose bounty we have all received, we pray thee to accept this offering of thy people. Remember them in love, those who brought it and those for whom it is given, and so follow it with thy blessing that may promote peace and goodwill among men. And I believe Barbara post um, where you can donate or give, give love. And then for ISDTC, um, we know it's PayPal or a check to Ms. Uh, Takani's home address. And for announcements, and I may ask Barb to come on because we're kind of doing joint announcements. So meet and greet and affirmation of spirit will be conducted after benediction today. And the reason for that is when we do affirmation of spirit, sometimes people do not be, want to be on the recording. So we'll end the recording after benediction. Um, For ISD Madison and Treasure Coast, we both host services on the first and third Sunday of the month. ISD is currently on Zoom only, um, but we plan to return to service in October, God willing. Uh, So Sunday services are Sunday, September 19th, October 3rd, and October 17th. I want to give you a heads up. ISD is participating with the Interfaith Diamond Dialogue on September 27th. That's Monday at 7 p.m. on Zoom. And everybody is welcome. Everybody in the country. You just have to RSVP. Um, but I'm going to be one of the panelists. We're, we're talking. Uh, we will be discussing responses to trauma. Um, And second, ISDTC is teaming up. This is important with ISD instructors from Oneida, New York for the 2021-2022 ISD Healing Program. This is a year-long program to become an ISD certified healer. 
the courses may be taken individually or you may want to commit to the healing program, which is quite reasonable as an ISD member. And there's a significant discount with prepayment. For more information, contact me. I will get, be getting an email out to people um, in a few days. We're signing up for constant contact. But I'll get the information out. And the um, first class starts, I think, on the 16th or 17th. So I will be getting that out to you. Barbara, did you want to share? Um, yes, thank you. Linda, thank you for joining us today. And it's a great honor to have Treasure Coast joining Madison. So it's great to do things together since we're all one big happy family, like we did Easter and Christmas. And we look yep. forward to doing more uh, services together. So I put in the chat the first link is if you'd like to donate to ISD Madison. And then the second link is for if you'd like to donate to ISD Treasure Coast. Um, we are continuing our Tuesday night meditation classes at seven o'clock. So if you're interested, you're welcome to join us. If you'd like to see what the meditations are about, they are published on our YouTube channel. And um, we're looking to do a Thursday night healing as well. So if you're interested in that, please let us know. And if there's any other classes you would like to see, we will try to make arrangements uh, from another ISD if we don't offer it. Or if you'd like to facilitate a class, please let us know and we'd be happy to have you as we are here to serve. So please let us know what you need. We apologize for uh, any inconvenience caused today that we were supposed to meet physically at the lodge, but due to all the people that are suffering because of the storm, we figured it would be better to meet virtually. So I understand many people that normally don't get flooded are flooded and had to deal with water issues and basements and road closures. So we appreciate the special prayer that Mel started at the beginning for everyone that they get back to normal and that everyone's safe and healed and sending a special blessing and love to the entire country for everything it's going through, including the fires in California that my brother is supposed to, and he actually is smelling the fires. So I wish we could see some of that rain down there. But yes. Can't. So well, I think that's it, but we will be back into the lodge the next uh, service on September 19th. So thank you all, and it's a great pleasure to have the Treasure Coast team here, and uh, nice to meet everyone. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Barbara. Th thank you so much. I want to do this again soon. Um, we, we didn't know how this would play out. It was just beyond what, what we intended, but I'm honored to. I hope I didn't traumatize your congregation. We, we do things a little bit differently here, but um, I just enjoy seeing everybody. It's, it's wonderful to see new face, faces. Um, so let's have a prayer of closing followed by the benediction. And then we're going to open all the mics up and we're going to do meet and greet. And then we'll do affirmation of spirit. The courage of the morning dawn and the strength of the eternal hills, the peace of the evening's end, and the love that God fills your hearts and governs your lives. Amen. Our brothers and sisters rejoice in life. Aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, and live in peace. For the creator of love and peace is with you. Amen. Okay, everybody can unmute. Morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hi, Betty. Oh. <laughs> I can't see you. Are we still recording, I, Melinda? I'll turn it off. I'll stop. Okay. In our two county, in our county, we sent out, um, how many was it, Connie? Seven. Six. Seven. And thanks, Connie. I, delivered. Martin, Connie. St. Lucie, Indian, and um, Sebastian. What is Bavard? No, no Bavard. 
at no. least not yet. But anyway, snack, gratitude snack totes were these big totes full of snacks, healthy and naughty, went out to the um, hospitals who were working in the emergency departments and COVID units. And then it was, I think last Saturday, um, I went over to Cleveland Clinic with the interfaith and we held up signs. I don't have the sign, you know, saying, and I'm gonna say this to you as we close, we see you, we see you, we hear you, and we appreciate you. So I'm, I'm gonna leave it at this for, thank you for a wonderful service. We see you, we hear you, we appreciate you, and we love you. Thank you. Thank you all, God bless you. God bless.